Rarely do you meet a special group of people who remind you that doing science is a privilege. The biology students in the Prison University Project are just such a group of people. The, the most fascinating uh, subject we've studied so far for me is the human cell and specifically in the human cell, the uh, protein motor. <laughs> That, that is this little protein figure carrying these huge objects in comparison to its size. <laughs> and one of the huge concepts that I got from this class was like when we did photosynthesis, right? And the consumption of, of hydrogen in the plant, light, turning the light into, into cell respiration, right? And seeing how incredibly efficient, right, life is. This CRISPR thing, you can take the DNA, take out a bad nuclear and put a good one in. That's amazing. The students' passion for biology and love of knowledge isn't lost on their instructors. Adam Williamson and Ryan McGorty are two scientists that taught the PUP intro biology course during the fall semester of 2014. One of my favorite aspects of the course uh, was having, having to do with the students having, having an immense amount of curiosity about biological systems, but having a place to put that energy and gain really intellectual self-confidence. It really you know, surprised us and, and how into it they got, you know, and, and how, how much effort they put into kind of coming up with really creative ideas. Adam and Ryan's biology course fulfills one of the science requirements for the Associate of Arts degree program offered through the Prison University Project. PUP is one of the few higher education programs in California prisons. It began in 1996 as an alliance between Patton University, the Education Department at San Quentin, and a professor from UC Davis. It started with donated textbooks and no budget, but fundraising efforts have helped support and expand the program to what it is today. The folks who are incarcerated in any country or in any state tend to be the people who are the most marginalized, um, the most disenfranchised, have had the least opportunities educationally, academically, um, professionally, economically. Many of the students we have at San Quentin had real serious struggles when they were in school. Often the schools were low performing, but there may have also been a lot of community violence, domestic violence. Many of our students were homeless or were in foster care. So their educational experiences were also severely disrupted. Well, for myself, uh, being that at one time I considered myself a chemist, right? and I was a street chemist. It led me to prison with a life sentence, right? And when I came to jail, the only education I probably had at the time was that street education. And I realized that in order to uh, change who I was and no longer believe that particular uh, views in life, that I needed to educate myself. What motivates me is my ignorance. Like, I couldn't write an essay. I, my education was very limited, you know? So when I enrolled into the program, I realized that I do have the ability to learn. I can go to college, you know? College was like, never even crossed my mind before, you know? So when they're first in the classroom at St. Quentin, there's a lot of work to do, not only dealing with academic skill deficits, but also helping them to get comfortable in school and sort of rediscover an identity as, as a student and to really start to understand their own academic potential. So both Adam and I volunteered to teach a biology class with lab for the fall semester. The class met three times a week uh, for two or three hours. So it was seven hours a week for a 15-week semester, um, and one cannot lecture just for that period of time. So that motivated us to have a lab or an activity with pretty much every class period, in some cases for topics that one wouldn't expect an activity to necessarily be attached. So one of the more memorable labs that we ran was a sea urchin fertilization lab. And the students actually got to see, you know, the, the living sperm and the egg under the microscope. And they were, they were amazed. For many of them, you know, they hadn't used a microscope before, let alone seen a living cell, let alone seen the, you know, the act of fertilization. So they were amazed. And then the next day, uh, that Monday night following, we actually got to see kind of the first stages of fertilization. So I like learning about the cells, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, especially what we did just for the hands-on project with the, uh, the sea urchin and mixing the sperm and the egg together, just watching it develop. 
But yeah, I do enjoy apologies. I don't know where it's going to take me. So, all right. All right. but uh, every time, every time I hear it, particularly with these, yeah, these new um, microscopes that give us, you know, things you can see with. You know, I like to get more involved, and I hope I can get involved to the point where you know, I can find a way to research and find a cure for most of the things need out here. I'm considering becoming a drug and alcohol counselor. So I think biology would be uh, extremely important in learning the uh, biological makeup of the person uh, if they're uh, predisposed to addiction or not, along with the uh, environmental mix. Uh, and between the two, one would have some uh, information on how to arm themselves against that. I think most students came into the class with a pretty strong interest in biology. This wasn't, you know, a, a forced class, this was an elective, so um, the students signed up to take this biology class, but it certainly furthered their interest in biology. You know, by the end of the class, the students were asking us, you know, what's next? What's the next science or biology class you guys are going to teach? Or what other material do you have for me that I can continue to learn biology on my own? Um, and a lot of the students didn't want to give back their textbooks at the end of the semester. They wanted to, you know, hold on to them and continue reading them. Getting inmates engaged in their education is one promising way to reduce the chances that released inmates will end up back in prison. PUP is one model that empowers inmates intellectually, teaches them important work and life skills, and builds their self-confidence, all of which prepares them for a better transition back into society once they are released. Another thing that continuously keeps me motivated uh, coming, to, coming to the PUP class is the fact that people leave uh, parole here, and we get word back how they doing. Every story that we've heard is that, oh, that guy's going to State University, or oh, he has a job working here, or oh, he's doing this, that, and the other. Uh, Pup has a terrific track record for men who successfully complete the program go out and do well, and I want that to be my story. I don't want to. I don't want to leave prison the same way I came in. So, uh, Pat was one of the ways that I asked myself to to move forward, and it's been a been a great experience for me. So as I spoke about earlier, one of the things that I learned from this class is how intimately connect, connected I am to the world around me. And so in that, it helps me connect to who I really am and be able to show compassion to other people, be able to show love to other people, be able to use the knowledge that I gained from classes like this to help the person next to me in their journey in life. Right? So it's like it, that saying of life only matters and the effect it has on another life. I don't want the, the effects that I've had in the past to be the effects that I have in the future. Right? And so this education is mainly what motivates me is to get a better understanding and live a better life. It's been life changing. For me, it has changed my life tremendously. I don't know if you can have any idea of the impact that you guys have for, on all of us. Because uh, I see people and I see you guys like as leaders because you guys are also an example to us that like you got you guys do this from, from your heart and I see you guys doing that and motivates me to in my community to be a leader and do also practice that and do that without expecting anything in return. And it betters the community, it betters us and it just makes me feel like a human being, you know, and I appreciate that.